Well then, this is a new film from Paul Verhoeven, and it's well, it's it's a it's a, it's an interesting one, isn't it's it? It's a very interesting film, yes. Mm. Don't know where don't know where to begin, so I'm mm. not gonna I'm gonna pass it to Ryan. He can begin it instead. Uh, yeah, <laughs> th- thank you, thank yeah, you, yeah. thank you, my man. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, uh, Paul Paul Verhoeven. <laughs> I can't <laughs> that was that was funny. <laughs> but um, directed by Paul Verhoeven, who um of uh, Showgirls, Basic Instinct, uh, Total Recall, Robocop fame, is uh, back with a film that's been doing the rounds a bit. Yes. Since Khan hasn't just it? a um, bit. Built a, just a slight reputation. Uh-huh. Uh huh. On its way to UK release here, and um. Basically, um, to open up the plot, um, Michelle, played by Isabel Huber, is uh, sexually assaulted in the very opening scene yes. of the film, and it's uh, uncomfortable. And yeah, I mean, you don't, you don't, yeah, I mean, it's basically her recovering in the first scene that like, you don't see the actual no. sexual assault. You see it later on, but it's the recovery straight away. And uh, what does she do? She doesn't phone the police or anything. She basically just dusts herself off and continues with her day. Yeah, yeah. and that basically sets up her entire character because she is. Uh, I mean. Her stoicness in that reaction sums up her character of Michelle because it's a very difficult character that she plays because as the story develops, uh, her her rapist uh, sends her so, lots of sort of provocative sort of yeah like jibes, jibes to her, yeah. Yeah. It's like a cat and mouse like a cat and mouse game, game. Yeah. and uh, as this goes on, she decides, well, I'm not going to take it like that, and she starts sort of tooling herself up to go back against him or not. Mm. Yeah, I was gonna say, or yeah, not, or not, it, yeah. because it this, it, yeah. yeah, yeah, this is a story that is not the. It's not a film that, as it was titled, it was, um, it was, it was sort it, of it, advertised as a sexual assault revenge thriller. Yeah, and uh, it's not that. It's not that. I, 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 I have been struggling to think of a genre to place it in. To be honest, yeah, I mean, some people have said it's obviously an erotic thriller, but Verhoeven said it's not at all. It's not. Yeah. Erotic, it's not. A, it's not, not erotic, erotic in, in the slightest. <laughs> to, to, to call it erotic, does the, I mean, the, the film and the subject are real? Very, yeah, it's, it's quite yeah. disturbing. Very disturbing. Yes, yeah. um, black comedy-ish at times as well, which is <laughs> also just makes it like, what is it? Like, <laughs> I, I really, don't, I really want to know how to classify this film. Like, I mean, I've seen, think, it, I've seen it classified in most places as a dark comedy, but that suggests that's so much so about, much, yeah, about the subject matter. I mean, obviously, we, we, you, you can't trivialize sexual assault and rape as some outlets seem to have inadvertently done with their calling it that. Mm-hmm. So we, as we're saying in these opening minutes, got to be very careful how to classify the film. Let's just not classify it. And let's yeah, just say that it's a Paul Verhoeven it. film and this is what he does. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, I think yeah. if I had to classify it, it'd probably just be a character study. Yeah, because really? yeah. that's what it is. Some, yeah. It basically is, yeah. Because Isabel Lupo, I mean, that, that woman can act. Like I mean, it, I mean, people are saying that was she was robbed for the Oscar when 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 it was announced, mm-hmm. and you know I can kind of say that now. Yeah, well, like, this, I mean, this, this was like one of the last Oscar films that we hadn't seen. There's still a couple more that haven't come out yet, but certainly for the art, actress category, very good. Like it, yeah. it's it's it is sort of tough to take mm-hmm. it away from Emma Stone, but, but, it's just but such equally, a, yeah. I mean, Emma Stone's character was was layered and complex in in La La Land, but this is to a new level of, of depth and, and ambiguity in, in Isabel Huppert's character Michelle in this film and I think it's just, it's just so fascinating just watching her, her little nuances at play yeah. but the whole script isn't it I mean it's just like the, the way she reacts to things the way she's so stoic to her sexual assault in the aftermath the way she sort of casually and calmly deals with it. I mean she's a woman at the top of her game in the film uh, her character is a sort of um, she's the co-owner of a, um, a video game company on the verge of a new release mm. she's um, very in command of her, of, of her life in general and she's got a son who's uh, just wanting to get a new house with his um, with his new well, his, his, his girlfriend and soon to be new baby, who, who, she, who she dislikes. Yeah, 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 who she intensely dislikes. Well, she, then, she she even says in the film that she barely knows her son, though. Yeah, yeah there's, much, there's, a, yeah. there's a disconnect across mm. the whole film with every character. Nobody's yeah. re- nobody's really connected mm. until a certain Not point. All, yeah. Mm. But, um, but she, the, I mean, throughout the film, you do get that, that a lot of hints to stuff that the possibilities that are never really fully uh, engaged in a lot, which is just absolutely mm. fascinating to watch to see her react to. Um, yeah. <laughs> but this is this, this film is all about control. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? I mean, it's all about how much of control Michelle is in of her of her life, of a of a of a job, and and just how much this this sexual assault is going to react to her, like will make make her react to, and if she's going to let it get to her, and and how much control she actually feels like she has over. Because as the film goes, events happen between her and people she reacts with, and and uh, it's getting in a major spoiler territory to even sort of breach that. No, so I won't. But it's just it, it's just fascinating to see how her character develops and and becomes. I mean, the the shades of black and white in this film are extremely blurred. Yeah. And I think that the the, the way to say that uh, Michelle is a, a sort of protagonist is questioned a lot throughout the whole film. 
Well, we we, we we saw mm-hmm. the film on Sunday, and there's a panel afterwards, uh, chaired by uh, Verbal Remedy. Bridget Hamilton is the the I think she's the founder of that group. Yeah. And, and they discuss these issues that are in the film because obviously there is a lot of issues surrounding it and a lot of issues and and obviously the the, the key theme in their panel as well was also control. And it raised a lot of questions, as it should do, as a film like this should do and has done. And I, I, it, I'm glad that it was there because I didn't know how to feel about the film after I'd seen it. And only then did I kind of, when you when you really break it down and you have the voices in the room who kind of all have their own opinions. I was very grateful for that to happen. Uh, and it, it, But if anything, it made me more confused about how to feel about it. But I, I, I sort of, what I've, what I've come out thinking is that it's it's good that it's challenging and it's morally complex, and you know the the likability of characters is always up in the air. But to do it with a, t- a subject matter like this that is so taboo, that is so potentially you know touchy, and you know it, people have gone through this stuff. It's a it's a it's not something that should be trivialised. Um, Verhoeven has risked a lot by doing a film like this. But d- but that was part of the panel as well, wasn't it? Like, do do you feel like a film should? have a subject involved in something like sexual assault that a lot of people have gone through. Yes. Do you think it's fair? Yes. Like, I, I think it is. It, 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 like, it's, it's obviously difficult because of those who have suffered these kind of things. Oh, yeah, of course. Like, it's a real, you know, it, it's a trigger and it's, it's one of them things that it's mm-hmm. just nobody wants to have to see that up on the screen. But it approaches it in a different way, you know, it, it, not to say that it's empowering because it, it's, again, that's another great the thing, That's the thing. That's the great part that's of reading, the thing. The reading, isn't it? That's, yeah. See, that's the thing because some people have said... Obviously, Hubert's character's reaction to it is strangely empowering. Stork. It's it's yeah. it's it's a weird one. Like I said, like I was saying to you before, with the film it does walk that line mm. between. She just brushes it off, really. Yeah, it's, 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 it's extremely jarring to see. Mm. It's it's but, fascinating. But it's not just it's not just that in life. Everything in life, she's she yeah. she kind of brushes everything off. She's very abrasive, and she's. It's a fascinating mm. look in this in this character. I mean, it's a difficult character to bring to life, and I think she does a wonderful she job a fantastic of doing it. I mean, it's just I don't know. It's just there's something about this film that just had me completely entrapped for the whole thing. I was fascinated for. I mean, it's a funny film. Yeah. It's but it's also an extremely dark and cynical film throughout as well I mean it, it is the blackest of black comedy mm. in some in some sections mm. I think it's just like the actual sexual assault scenes are well, um, cause it, it appears in three different ways yeah. through the film it, it, it's kind of framed in three different ways uh-huh. which sort of plays with the perception a little bit as well it's it's clever like it's it's smart and clever and it's complex my, my big question is that would this film have the same kind of poignancy if it was a director who didn't do it in this way if it was less challenging if somebody had approached this if perhaps a, a female director had taken the story on would it have been different it I was. mean but it, it, it the way Verhoeven has made it, it, it up for interpretation I don't think there's a right or wrong answer I would hate mm. I would hate this to, to sort of inflict my opinion on anybody about it uh, because everyone will take something different away from it mm. I was entertained by it but I felt a bit icky in in the process. Mm, yeah. Mm. yeah, that's good. I, I just I just loved all the comparisons. I mean, obviously the, there's that the side plot of them her launching that new video game and all the sort of the violence around that. And there's a lot. I mean, the sexual imagery is there throughout the entire thing. Yeah. I mean, it's it is just just it's a it's a it's a really really well made film with a lot of sort of deep issues going on there. And, and as the verbal remedy panel proved, there is a lot of different readings and discussions that could be had around this. And mm-hmm. my my personal view, at least, is that the fact that. A film should be able to tackle any topic that at once, but it's then up to you to decide what your reading of the film is and whether you you dislike that or not. Mm. But that's my that's my and I understand that it can be a trigger one, and you never want anyone to suffer because they're seeing a film that is no, representing no, no. what they have gone through. But I don't think you should sort Lim- of. I don't think you should. There. Yeah, you should yeah, limit like, it. I don't, uh-huh. I don't think that should be happening because that's just not what I feel like it should be. No. But. Uh, L is on the Tyneside Cinema from well it's been there for a week now it's going on to uh, more screens because of popular demand everyone wants to see it everyone wants to sort of see what they think of it and mm-hmm. and, and read in their way uh, and we've got to say that the Verbal Remedy panel on Sunday was very very good they've already had one before for a different film uh, I'm sure they'd love to come back and do another one so go and show your support on their site verbalremedy.co.uk we'll hope to have Bridget Hamilton on the show next week on the podcast to kind of talk about this stuff in more detail maybe get into some spoiler territory and um, and and going a bit deeper than that if if we feel necessary to do so but if not yeah. you know verbal remedy all fantastic anyway so go and check it out film show classic now this is this